interesting. Uh, Dave, first off, how uh, big a deal is it for Finland? Well, at, at first sight, it seems like this is a really big deal because actually Finland imports 100% of its gas from Russia. However, only 5% of Finland's energy portfolio is made up of gas. So it is a big deal to replace that 5%. 5% isn't nothing. However, uh, this isn't as big a deal as when Russia cut off the gas supplies to Poland and Bulgaria, which are both much more dependent on gas. Now, Finland says that it received word from Gazprom, the Russian gas giant, this afternoon that supplies would be cut as of tomorrow morning, and the Gazprom provided no reason for the gas supplies being cut. Of course, there are two probable reasons. One, as you mentioned, is that Russia has vowed to retaliate in various ways for Finland applying to join NATO. And the other is that Finland is one of the countries refusing to pay Russia for gas in rubles, as Putin has been demanding. They also uh, will, will not do it in this kind of back-channel way that some EU companies have been doing, in which they pay in euros, but then it's converted into rubles. They're not doing that. There was the same case with Poland and Bulgaria. They had their gas supply shut off. Of course, this is part of a more worrying trend to, if Russia continues cutting off gas supplies because the EU Commission has instructed countries not to pay in rubles. They say that would violate not only the sanctions that the EU has placed against Russia, but also the very contracts that were signed. So it would vi violate both the law and it would be uh, legally actionable to demand something that wasn't specified in the contracts. Uh, now, Finland today confirmed that they are launching a floating liquefied natural gas facility that will float there uh, in the sea between Finland and Estonia. And the two countries will jointly manage that floating LNG gas terminal. They've essentially rented that for 10 months. And so they say that's going to be able to deliver liquefied gas from the United States. So that's gas that's liquefied in the U.S., sent on a ship, comes out on this floating facility, which are easy and quick to set up, and then it's turned back into gas. And they say that should make up for the 5 percent. So the message from Finland today is they're fine. However, this bodes not very well for Russia's future retaliatory action toward other EU countries that are more dependent on gas. Yeah, it's been, a, 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 as the week draws to a close, it's been one of those weeks where uh, European Union unity, which has been touted so much these last three months, has been put to the test. Uh, still no deal on an embargo of uh, Russian oil. Instead, uh, the outlier, Hungary's Prime Minister Viktor Orban, uh, welcoming a, uh, a Congress of uh, U.S. Uh, conservative lobby, CPAC. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Hungary is still digging in its heels here. There have been negotiations taking place over the past weeks to try to figure out what they can give Hungary and neighboring Slovakia in order to get them to end their veto on this proposed EU embargo against Russian oil. Hungary will not budge, despite being offered more and more. Uh, there was this big repower EU strategy that came out from the Commission on Wednesday uh, that has 2 billion euros immediately for oil infrastructure. That's seen very much as a gift to Hungary or maybe a bribe to Hungary to get it to end its veto. That's out of a uh, total of 300 billion euros that's going to be invested in weaning the EU off of Russian oil. But it's not working. They're still digging in their heels. And meanwhile, as you mentioned, in Budapest this week, they've been hosting this, uh, this conference of so-called uh, national conservatives, uh, otherwise known as nationalists, uh, from the United States and from Europe. These are people who used to be very cozy with Putin, who used to speak very highly of him and how he was doing great things for his nation. The message has shifted. They don't really want to talk about Putin. Now, when they talk about Russia, they say Russia isn't a nation. It's an empire. And therefore, nationalists should be opposed to Russia because we can read, like the EU, which is what they believe, Russia is an empire trying to impinge on national sovereignty. So some interesting messaging coming out of Budapest this week. Uh, but certainly, you didn't see a great message of EU solidarity in the face of Russia. They just kind of don't want to talk about Russia. And of course, meanwhile, Viktor Orban, the star of the show at that conference in Budapest this week, is helping Russia by vetoing this embargo on Russian oil. For now, at least, uh,